Hey everybody, welcome to GDPG, where we play games and talk game design, and today we're playing the Anor Saga 2 preview that was sent to us by Stoic because they're beautiful people. They really are. Oh, I am we've, we've so been, excited. We've been jonesing for this. Years. <laughs> So much so that we get the email with the, the Steam key at like 11 o'clock p.m. And I live in Chicago. He does not. And I was like, hey, Nathan, we just got the build key. And we were like, I was over tonight. an hour later. I was over. I was already on my <laughs> so way. So we're recording this very late, but it'll be worth it. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> um, um. So I think we wanted to start this off by watching the recap. Just so yep. anyone that hasn't actually played Banner Saga 1 gets at least a little bit of a sense of you know, what happened in the previous game, and or, if it's been a while since you played Banner Saga 1, then there's your recap right there. Yeah, either way. Plus, it's just beautiful, and just we're just going to do it. When the sun stopped in the sky, life continued as normal. So beautiful. Then the stone armor dread <laughs> reappeared. Ancient foes from the far northern reaches. I wonder who's talking right and now. And the world was thrown into chaos. Yeah, that's the question, because the sort of narrator in the first game Giant was Rook, right? Yeah. I mean, I want to say that it's a let, but that might be impossible. Now Hakon yeah. Is yeah, for those of you... Hakon. Of his race. Yeah, okay, so there was a, <laughs> there was a lot of confusion a about that in our last playthroughs. Father of a let. Mm, no, unlikely it's her. Safety. Sorry, yeah. This sort of the nice thing about this recap, though, is that I feel like they strategically chose to use voice acting Ivan. on some of the names, the like that there was a lot of confusion men. about. It like no Hakon, it was so confusing because we thought it was like Haukon or Hakon or Hakon. That nah, never was a thing, but always <laughs> guard. That we, guy. Yeah, Both Nathan and I were talking that we think he's going to be one of the main family. like antagonists of this game, um, but we couldn't remember who he was until we watched the uh, until yeah. now. They made a big deal out of him at the trailer, and I just could Two not like. I was like, I know I've seen him life. before, but it's like this big, burly, scary Varl. Who it could it be? Life. Cost of life of one held dear. But who is that? Who's in the boat? Who or was in the boat? Yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, by the way, we're assuming for the most part that you've played Banner Saga 2 if you haven't. Yeah, so... You should probably stop watching this and just go play. Yeah, it, go go buy Banner Saga 1 and play it if just you haven't yet because do it. it's a wonderful just game. Just do it. It is worth every cent. And from here on out, there's going to be spoilers. So, stay tuned. Sp <laughs> definitely spoilers. I just, before we jump in, I just want to point out that... Uh, you can't really, you know, take like take take advantage of the screen that we're seeing here. But like this pink background, these are all like pink trains, almost as if they're cherry blossoms. It's just the fact that this color exists in in the Banner Saga world at all. Which normally in Banner Saga it was very cold. Like it, it, it I, yeah. I don't think it was devoid of color, right? There was still a lot of color, but it was yeah. usually greens and blues. Yeah, greens and blues with that one streak of red, the banner, right? Yeah. That's why it stuck out. That's and actually so, a really good point. So you didn't see exactly these tints of colors. Anyway, also, uh, probably Juno <laughs> there. And he was uh, oogling the screen for at least half an hour before we got really? set up. Also, can I? Ooh, you can. All right. What else? Oh, interestingly enough, too, now we have Ivor that's actually kind of watching over the banner, which that's kind of a big deal because the Varl never cared about the banner before. Yeah. Their legacy was the bridge. They did mention. Or or the, really their city. Ubin, the, uh, the lore keeper, did mention that there was a banner, but he was talking about a different banner. Uh, that the kingdom of men had, or something like that. So maybe mm. it was just a tradition of men, but it wasn't this banner. Okay. And so it's, I mean, it's still a relevant thing to bring up. Finally, last thing I want to point out is that the two looks like the serpent, uh, the world serpent that we saw before coming out of either a longboat or the waves, but probably longboat. I, I think it's probably longboat, or like the serpent is behind the longboat and he's doing this little like. The, Energy like, breath staring over. Oh my god, yeah. it's terrifying. And then finally, last thing is the horseborn right here holding mm. a bow. Awesome. We, like, we are really they going to be Mongolian yeah. people? What are we going to see? Ah, all okay, right. We cool. should jump in. We spent too much it. time all not right. playing. We're doing a new game, <laughs> and uh, <gasps> so what? You get to choose. I mean, it only makes sense, I right? Mean, yeah, but okay. So you can import your save file, 
Or you can choose which hero yeah, survived it, the which last is, game. Which is nice if you don't necessarily have save files on it, the particular computer that you're playing on. Yep. So, I mean, personally, I'm all for choosing Rook because in my personal playthrough, my mindset was, as a good father, I I trusted Alette with the responsibility of having the silver arrow because I believed in her. Uh, I and she did in. it. I caved in too. And she did it and she died. Yeah. And also, we we have this discussion that either it kind of fits the Banner Saga 2 theme or Banner Saga theme in general because it's like, what's worse than a father outliving his own child? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Look and, how much he looks even more worn down. Poor Rook. All right, well, so we're going to we're gonna do Rook. We're not going to continue from a save file before because we want to see what happens. Like, what are they going to revert to on the information? Yeah, especially to you. I think it's important that you guys... So, any... You haven't, if you haven't seen any of our previous playthroughs, we don't want you to like not understand why things happened. Yeah. Um, so this way we're Gives totally fresh. Nice little... Okay, cool. So Rook, overcome with the grief of, of the death of his daughter of the Battle of uh, Beauregard, Rook, a skilled hunter and proven leader, wonder, wonders why anyone would still follow his lead. With the oh. help of a lifelong friend, the giant Varl Ivor, perhaps he can change the tragic pattern of losing, losing those who depend on him and ensure the caravan's safety on the long journey to the human capital, Arborang. Okay, I guess that makes sense that that would be the next destination. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I'm... We didn't see anything of it at all except for Luden. <laughs> um, Alette, since the tragic events of Oresgard, the family of the caravan looked to Alette, daughter of Rook, the former leader, to guide them. Though young, her compassion for others and ability with the bow have impressed all but most stubborn clan leaders. Calling on her personal resolve and lifetime friendship with the archer Odeleaf, uh, with the massive Varl Ivor, Alette must continue her father's work of seeing the caravan to safety of the capital city Arborang. It's interesting that they cool. call out Odleaf in Alette's description, but not Rook's, which means yeah. that I, I bet you Odleaf sort of be, takes on the like mentor role for Alette. It would make sense because in Rook's, like if you talk to Odleaf wrong, she could be like, ah, nobody would listen to me because I'm a woman. If you're a jerk, oh, and like, true. yeah, you're probably right. No one will. She'll just she just becomes unimportant in the story, which is so sad so. because she's one of the best characters. And do Rook. Mm, oh yes. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's the other thing. They went through a publisher for this one. Oh. Oh. Versus Evil. Is a strange funk out of late Time continues washing over us moment after moment like waves on a coast. Some more fears, more violent than others. So few of my kind the giant war remain alive. Is this Ivor? Even I think so, so, I find myself wondering if humans, while able to bear children, suffer more for the loss of loved ones. Several weeks have passed mm. since we slew the Sunder known as Bellower, but the chaos nice. of the world did not wither as we hoped. The world is breaking. Only the sun has stopped moving. Replaced with o no, the world is breaking. Arboring, the human capital. But the river curses us with a clear view of the dreads, assaulting another hopeless village. Oh yeah. That's a great start to this game. The world is breaking. Didn't even mention the serpent. That's how like crazy shit is right now. Well, to be Doesn't fair, it. to be fair, their experience with the serpent was pretty minor. Really, it was it was um, Avond that in Juno that kind of like. Well, I guess even Avond didn't really know too much. No, he didn't really seem to. The angle has changed. Perspective. Yeah. Do you think it's slightly higher? Feels like it and farther away. It's definitely further to the away, with you. but I bet you we have better zoom capabilities. I love that guy. He just walked up and just stabbed him with a knife. That is really impressive, too. Oh, uh, yeah, Rook. Just do it. Just beat everybody. That's what he does. Shoot the, shoot the... Don't stop shooting. Keep killing them! Oh, oh yeah. Man. 
Damn it, Rook. <laughs> Quit turning your head. Ah. Uh. All right, drag around the screen, see your surroundings, and click the check mark to continue. So We're zooming. Tutorial stuff. Oh, I didn't actually want to. This portrait show the order of initiative, taking turns from left to right. Your heroes are blue and the enemy is red. It's your turn to act. Nice that they chose blue and red because, you know, colorblindness is a thing. <laughs> cool. Iver, Iver, Iver. It's just uh, oh, movement even. happens before an action. So this, I feel like this tutorial is a little bit more in depth than the one from Banner Saga 1. It does seem like it. They also showed us a little bit of movement beforehand, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. While humans fill single tiles. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, click, click the tile the you want mark. to move. So you're going to make me go here. That's fine. Cool. Target the enemy. Four and seven. Okay. Health and armor and everything still seem to be the same. I mean, okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, their system is still intact the same way it was before. So then that's sort of the question is, do you think that it's necessary for them to have a thorough tutorial in a game that is the sequel? I guess, I mean, design-wise, it's really good to... Uh, okay, hasn't really changed. I, I guess, like, design-wise, it's, it's good that they didn't... They anticipate that players wouldn't have played the first one. Yeah. Um, I mean, you really should play the first one, but... I, I, I guess maybe some players might start here and be like, wow, that was amazing. Let's see where it started. Oh, Because I bet uh, you this game will work on its own. New mechanic, yes. Uh, the enemy reach, the stretch grunt will choose to smash an obstacle in his way. Obstacles in combat board will make you change tactics to plan wisely to make them work to your benefit. So that that is kind of a big deal because we didn't have any actual obstacles in the environment. Nope, I think it was just I, a fresh board with some spaces in between. I think I, in my playthrough with Harry Poppins in the Pragmatic Saga, I think this is actually one of the things we talked about that would actually really like benefit the the game mechanics is having like non enemy obstacles on the battlefield. Mhm. Um, obstacles are now golden uh, because before it was a little hard. You mean hard. exertion? Or the the uh, sorry, yeah, the exertion. You can the the extra spaces you can see are they're like gold instead of um, like that light yellow beigeish that they were before. Makes them easier to see. Yeah, it does make them easier to see. I can't remember what color they actually were, but move, ability, attack, end of turn. Okay, so they basically made things a little more clear. Cool. Sunder. Ability description below. Oh, cool. Did they show the description like this in the last they game? They did. They did. I it was, it was a, a little, little more it was, subtle. Yeah, it was, it was, um, it just wasn't as clear as to what it did. All right, the ability description appears to be the tools of the, allows him to hit. Oh, okay, cool. And then confirm. I'll hit the guy you want me to hit. Wow. And then smash. Mm. Chain. Village. One guy left. Um, pillage mode, basically, when there's only one person left, uh, everybody, it goes out of your turn, their turn, your turn, their turn, it goes into, you know, every remaining person. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've seen this guy before. Character does not move on his turn. He can rest and regain willpower. He will rest on his turn. Yeah, um, new he's guy. He's like PC. I can't control him. Oh, interesting. All right. That's because he hasn't officially joined the party yet. <laughs> uh, we don't know who this guy is. The red icon. I think they're showing you how to use your willpower. Max that out. Although I guess you didn't even really need to because... Yeah. <laughs> Meh. I think you were going to deal two base, so they were probably like, just Not dead one. finished. Wow, Rook has gone bloodthirsty. I mean, it's really not too surprising, though. He probably has a vengeance out for these guys because they are the reason his daughter is dead. Oh my... Oh no! Wow! No, don't, don't be Zero looting. Zero hesitation, man. Just go in there, X. <laughs> no, Rook, stop it, man! Oh no! Why? Why are you? Okay. Wow. Well, this is not we're how I expected have to things. leave on this. Yeah, this is this is <laughs> good, this is a good cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So that's it. Let's do a question of the day, huh? So question of the day. I, I want to ask you guys, since we didn't get to see too much about like how Renown is working yet and experience is working yet, I want to ask you guys what you think about the tutorial. Um, and I'm sure there might be a little bit more tutorial still to come, but um, 
kind of the same question I asked you. Do you think that it's necessary that the designers of this game kind of reiterated a lot of the same mechanics in as much detail as they did, even though this is the sequel to another game? Or should they just assume that players already kind of know how things work and kind of just tell the player what's different from here? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I definitely have a lot of opinions on that, but we want to hear from you guys. So please, please answer the question in the comment section below and uh, vote to keep this going. Vote to keep this going and vote for any other games you want to see beyond Banner Saga 2. Yeah, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everyone.